So let's look at, take a look at some of these roofs. What, as I mentioned earlier, what we're really looking for here is how do we have a, a solar roof that is better than a normal roof, um, that uh, looks better, uh, lasts longer, has better insulation, insulating effect, and where the cost of roof plus electricity is, is less than that of a normal roof. So yesterday, Elon Musk announced Solar Roofs. It's a new initiative uh, with his other company, Solar City, where they produce these uh, solar roof tiles to replace regular solar panels on your roof. And look at it. It's fantastic. I, I want it on my house. It looks absolutely brilliant. They're also called um, solar shingles as well, but uh, Tesla's going for the solar roof name. And I'll let Elon explain how this uh, ties together with the uh, Powerwall 2, which they also announced, uh, which I'm very seriously considering getting the new Powerwall 2 double the capacity for the same uh, price. Anyway, that looks great, uh, which was the same announcement as this. Anyway, I'll let Elon uh, explain how that uh, ties in with the Powerwall and the Tesla car. This is sort of the integrated future. You've got a electric car, a power wall, and, solar, and a solar roof. And the key is that it needs to be beautiful, affordable, and, in, and seamlessly integrated. And then if, if, if all those things are, are true, why would you go any other direction? And certainly, why would you go in any other direction if Tesla have perfected these solar roof tiles? Instead of uh, when you build a new house or you're renovating your house and you want a new roof, why put regular roof tiles on there, terracotta or concrete or whatever, when you can replace them with glass solar panels like this? In this case, take a look at the uh, four different types they got. They actually look really fantastic. Uh, Tuscan glass, slate glass, which is absolutely brilliant, uh, textured glass tiles and smooth glass tiles, and they've really gone to town with the engineering on these things too. I'll let Elon explain once again. This is fantastic. Right, so that house is also solar, um, and that's a, a sort of a style of a, of a French slate, which is one of the hardest things to, to do. It's, it's considered one of the, the best roofs you can possibly do as a conventional roof. So I said, well, if, can we make a French slate roof that's solar that looks as good or, or better than a, than a conventional uh, French slate roof, and we're able to do that as well. Th that's done with hydrographic printing, so each tile is unique. So th it's, it's, uh, the, the production process itself makes each tile especially unique, a sort of special snowflake tile. But the nice thing is that no two roofs will be the same. So what the French slate hydrographic looks like, you can see that. And here you can really see, as the angle changes, that you can see the solar cells. Here we, we, we put a, a film with microlubers on it so that as, as the angle changes, it goes from transparent to opaque. Fr from the sun's vantage point, which tends to be high angle, you can see the, the, solar, the solar cells, but as you change the angle to a shallow angle, uh, it reverts to um, a, a sort of an orangey color. <laughs> uh, so we just as a demonstration video, show you what happens if you drop a, drop a big weight on a conventional roof tile and one of our glass tiles. So it looks like Tesla have totally nailed the engineering behind solar roof tiles or solar shingles. And, well, you'd expect that from Tesla. They've got some of the best uh, engineering in the business. But is it all that it's cracked up to be? Well, let's take a bit more critical look at it. Now, the first thing to realize is that there's nothing new here at all. You've been able to buy solar roof tiles for more than a decade now. They're called uh, solar shingles usually, but this is basically exactly the same thing that's been available for a long time and it hasn't taken off. In fact, there's been quite a few casualties in this market. Eric Wessoff has done an excellent uh, article here, which I'll link in uh, down below, showcasing the companies in the solar shingle, solar rooftop market that have actually gone bust. And it's the likes of Dow Chemical, uh, BP as well, and a whole bunch of companies that just have not made it. And yes, there are uh, a few that are still uh, going in this market. You can actually still buy it, but this has been going on for a decade and it hasn't been successful. So Tesla already have an uphill battle. There's a reason these companies haven't cracked the market, and it's not just pure engineering. 
Now, first of all, we'll just take a look at the efficiency here and uh, SunPower, a manufacturer of uh, high efficiency uh, solar panels. They've uh, just looked at the data between uh, two of the uh, competition or previous competition, uh, Dow and uh, CertainTeed uh, solar shingles, and it's anywhere from 60% to 70% in that order of the capacity of regular rooftop solar panels. And I don't really expect the uh, Tesla ones to be any different, really. It's going to be the same order. And there's going to be a couple of reasons for the reduced efficiency. One is that uh, they've got to manufacture them uh, differently because looks are important. So they've got to install that uh, film in there so that you can't see them from an angle. So there's going to be some loss in that. There just has to be. And also for the fact that uh, they can't utilise the same large uh, square area. That's one of the main driving factors. And that's per square metre area. So you need a greater rooftop uh, space to get the same capacity compared to regular rooftop solar. But I know this is not really a big deal, but I just wanted to point it out because, uh, hey, you're installing them on the whole roof. They'll compensate for that. The area would have been wasted anyway, et cetera, et cetera, all those arguments. And it should be noted here that Tesla have released absolutely no technical details of their solar roof at all, either the power output, uh, whether or not the, these test homes that they were showing off were actually real and generating power, uh, how they're interconnected, which is a whole big can of worms. Basically, all we've got at the moment is pure marketing hype. Um, global warming is becoming uh, a, serious, is a serious crisis, and, and we need to do something about that. So Elon actually opened his talk uh, talking about uh, CO2 levels and how we have to do something about it. And that's fantastic. I love it. I, you know, hats off that he's actually taking a, a, a holistic system approach to this thing with not only uh, solar panel production, but the electric cars and the energy storage. It's absolutely brilliant. So if you're trying to save the planet, then I think it's important that we actually manufacture the most efficient systems possible, the most bang per buck, the least polluting, all that sort of stuff. So let's see if we can maybe find some numbers on uh, how much energy is required, input energy, manufacturing energy required to manufacture these solar rooftop tiles compared with regular solar panels and regular roofs. So as it turns out, I was able to find some data for uh, manufacturing regular uh, roofs, be it the uh, concrete one or the terracotta roof tiles or uh, sheet metal. And let's take it a figure of around 250 megajoules per square metre. Um, but this includes both the uh, frame and the wooden frame and the uh, plasterboard uh, roof itself. So I found a figure for the embodied energy in plasterboard. That's the energy it takes to uh, basically manufacture the plasterboard at about six megajoules per kilogram. And and I also found a figure how uh, for one square metre is about 10 kilograms of plasterboard. So that's 60 megajoules per square metre. So let's subtract that roughly from the 250 we got before. Let's eh, even it out, call it 200 megajoules per kilogram for a regular roof. Now, if we compare that to a uh, toughened glass service, toughened glass takes a lot more energy than uh, regular glass. And I found a figure here, 15.9 uh, megajoules per kilogram. I uh, found several other sources that seem to confirm around about uh, that figure. And if we uh, do a calculation of how much uh, glass per square metre, it's about 25 kilograms, multiply those, we're talking about 675 megajoules per square metre for 10 millimetre thick uh, toughened glass. I'm not sure how thick the uh, Tesla one is, but if it's not 10 millimetres, I'm a monkey's uncle. So if we compare the two uh, roof technologies, the new uh, solar roof tile toughened glass versus your normal uh, sort of, you know, terracotta roof tile, clay roof tile, um, it's about three times the energy to manufacture that. That doesn't include the solar cells, and I'm going to leave those out because the solar cells uh, can be included on regular roofs or they can be included in the uh, solar roof tile as well. But just the roof material itself switching from uh, clay to the toughened glass, probably about three times. I mean, I know these figures are all, depends where you get the energy from and all that. It's a complex calculation and, uh, you know, whether you use, you know, coal-fired energy to do it or you use solar power to power your plant and it's, and the trucks and the mining and uh, it's a complicated thing. But I, uh, these figures are kind of, you know, ones that I found in the industry. So it's about three times more energy to manufacture these glass ones. 
And if you're interested to know how much energy it takes to manufacture uh, just the solar panels, solar cells themselves, well, we can get data on that too, just for fun. Well, the US Department of Energy have done a paper on this and uh, they reference a, a, another paper here, which is the Alcema, um, that's the name of the person who did the paper, estimated that it takes 120 kilowatt hours per square meter to make a frameless uh, PV module. But as I said before, that's just pretty academic because there's, let's just say that the solar cell uh, inclusion cost is the same for whether or not it's a rooftop, uh, traditional installed rooftop module system or whether or not the solar cells are embedded inside these tiles. It doesn't really make a difference here. Where It's more of the difference between the energy to manufacture the glass, toughened glass versus the uh, clay type tiles. I mean, the, the key is really to make, to make solar something desirable where if you install a solar roof on your house, um, you're really proud of it. You want, you want to put it on the most prominent part of the house. You want to call your neighbors over and say, check out, check out the sweet roof. Um. <laughs> And of course that's great and I agree that this is what people are going to want. They want a good looking roof. I mean Tesla make sexy products. You know you want to oh, look at my Tesla solar roof. Isn't it fantastic? So you're not just going to do the optimal parts of this thing. You're going to cover your entire house. So naturally they've uh, thought of this and although it really wasn't in his presentation because that was pitched at uh, you know investors and the general public and things like that, no real nitty gritty uh, technical detail. If you have a look at their uh, press kit on their website, they of course have to manufacture two different uh, types of panel here, both the ones with the solar cell embedded for when you want to generate power and the ones that don't because they're used in shaded areas, not optimal areas or whatever. And the user can uh, pick and choose which tiles they want. In fact, every person who has a system like this installed, the user wouldn't uh, choose really, you know, you'd have uh, some uh, assessment done on your house and uh, telling you where you can install your various tiles. So they all should look at least the same uh, from the ground level anyway. So it seems as though they solve that problem rather nicely. Every Like you just install all exactly the same panels all over your house but you choose solar or non-solar. Great. And if you have a look at one of the tiles here you can see uh, Elon's fingers actually through. So it is that uh, uh, semi-transparent uh, glass like that which of course uh, he mentioned in the presentation that uh, they could potentially be uh, better thermal insulators than uh, previous ones. But hey, is it going to let the light through, heat up your roof? How do you cool your roof down? Do you, are you allowed, uh, able to use existing uh, whirly birds, for example, those uh, little uh, you know, heat-driven uh, turbines that extract heat from the roof? How are you going to get that out? Can you uh, use existing uh, uh, technologies to uh, you know, cut into these things and, and shape them and things like that when you're installed? So there's all sorts of installation issues. and um, um, what happens when these things get hot? Is it in, you know, is that going to kill the efficiency like it does with uh, regular panels? Because uh, regular solar modules at least have the advantage of uh, being lifted off the roof, so they actually have uh, some airflow underneath uh, to help cool them down. But these things are your roof, so it's a bit of a different ball game there. And, you know, there's absolutely, we don't have any numbers on this at all. So it's like, yeah, you know, kind of like trust us, we'll, uh, you know, we've got the solution. But, yeah, I, I think they might come a guts or in some areas when they actually start to, uh, you know, mass use these things. There's a lot of subtle details goes into uh, roof uh, manufacturing and uh, keeping roofs cool and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's just a huge unknown. And the other major issue is how do you install and interconnect these things as in a large array? You could have a thousand of these things on your roof. You can see here, if we actually zoom into Elon's uh, video here, you can see like two little uh, in interconnecting conductive uh, tabs on there, which look like um, it's they're just the terminals for the solar panel. And sure enough, uh, solar shingles uh, you know, have been traditionally installed in a similar way. They um, put them in a series uh, configuration like this. Now I know there's nothing new here, they've been doing this solar shingle implementation for you know a decade now and Tesla engineering is top notch, I'm sure they're sorting this out. So just as a wild guess they might have some sort of uh, series configuration like this and once again for uh, shaded uh, stuff you would have uh, diode protection in there as well. So they have to sort of like clip together somehow like this, you can't have like wiring between individual ones, it'd be so messy so you know, but this is a lot of tiles, a lot of implementation inside a regular 
uh, solar panel. These are just connected with, uh, you know, silver uh, wires. Uh, you know, they're super reliable, super efficient. So they've got quite a little uh, uphill battle there in terms of uh, proving the reliability and uh, longevity of this sort of uh, system. And there's about a four to five million uh, new roofs in the US every year. Um, and I think 20 times that number worldwide. Um, so you can imagine over time, as people replace their roofs with solar roofs, that the whole neighborhood, would, would every, everyone would have solar. Like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you? Over time, every, every house would, would become a solar house. And yes, I agree. Every house will become a solar house, and I want every house to become a solar house. My house is a solar house. But I just wanted to point out, one, hey, it's not a new idea. Many companies have tried this and failed, and it really hasn't uh, caught on. There are very good reasons for that. Whether uh, Tesla can make a difference here remains to be seen. They're less efficient per square meter than regular modules. Uh, they likely require more energy to produce, so they're not as uh, sustainable if you do you know, your 5 million, 50 million rooftops, uh, they require a more complicated in installation. Uh, they may not be as reliable. We need to like dial down the hype here on these solar roofs. They are not the universal, you know, magic bullet that uh, I think Tesla are hoping it will be, especially to uh, the shareholders and investors and everything else. But if anyone can make uh, solar roofs work, it's probably Tesla because, hey, they've got Elon Musk, they've got the brand, they've got the Tesla mystique behind it, they've got the systems integration, they've got the sexiness, the whole works. And it looks like their engineering on these tiles is actually really well thought through. And the classic argument will, of course, be that uh, who cares if these things are less efficient, who cares if they require more energy to produce, who cares if they're more complicated installation or, you know, whatever issues uh, like that certainly it's about the mass market appeal and getting people interested in solar and excited about having a solar roof rather than just oh let's put solar panels on our roof oh look at this sexy new um tesla solar roof system i can integrate with my power wall and my uh tesla car and everything else and, and granted okay that's fine it's going to get Hopefully, you know, a fair few people are excited about it. And the engineering side of me just can't help but think, oh, we need to use solar panels in the most efficient uh, way possible with the least amount of manufacturing input, etc., etc. So I hope the numbers come through on this. I still think existing uh, roofing technology is uh, going to be less energy intensive than uh, these things. So the verdict is certainly well and truly still out on these things. And I just hope everyone dials back the hype just a little bit on this because, well, yeah, let's just uh, wait and see. Implementing this on a mass scale, if it uses more energy and has more issues uh, further down the track and reliability sorts of things, well, that can turn into a big deal. So, hey, good on Elon for doing this. I think it's fantastic. It looks like as far as solar uh, tiles go, they have implemented this really well. I am uh, quite impressed. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, found it useful. And if you want to comment, EV blog down below or YouTube comments or whatever, go for it. Catch you next time. Hi, back in uh, 2013, June to be uh, precise, I had this uh, solar array installed, a uh, three kilowatt uh, solar power system on my home roof here. So a lot of people have been asking, can I get the data from this and uh, see how it's uh, performed over that time and uh, comment on that. So yeah, let's do it. Let's take a look at uh, some of the figures I've gotten out of this thing because I have been logging all the data that comes out of it.